Chapter Two: Matrices and Linear Transformation. Let's first talk about matrix multiplication. Suppose A is a matrix n by p, and B is a matrix p by n. So it has n columns. So B is given like this. The matrix product of A B is defined like this. It's a matrix of size n by n. It has n columns. And the first column, this is the first column. The first column is the matrix vector product A B one. This is the first column. And the second column is the matrix vector product A B two. Continue like this. The last column is the matrix vector product A B n. So that's the definition of matrix product. A question. Now we have a matrix product A B and. The the left hand side here we have a matrix product and then here is a matrix vector product on the right hand side what do we have, what have here is B V this is a matrix vector product and this out the result is a vector and we multiply A with this vector so this is another matrix vector product would these two be the same would the left hand side be the same as right hand side for all v in R n for all v vector let's use the definition of matrix vector product on the right hand side and see if it's the same as the left hand side right hand side we have b v the matrix vector product here we have v one b one plus v n b n it's a linear combination of the b vectors and the linear combination coefficient are v entries of v using the distributive law we can multiply a with each of these terms and then add them up so we get v1 and ab1 v2 ab2 all the way to v and abn and this is again a linear combination what are the linear combination vectors the linear combination vectors are ab1 ab2 to abn these n vectors and the linear combination coefficients v1 to vm so again we can express it as a matrix vector product and this is the matrix vector product we form the matrix ab1 as the first column ab2 as the second column continue on to abn and uh, the linear combination coefficient v1 to vm becomes a vector and we notice that the first part is something that we have just talked about here, right? The matrix product. That's the matrix product. So this is the matrix product. The matrix product. And there we go. It's the matrix product and the V. So we can conclude that the left hand side is always the same as the right hand side because the left hand side is always the same as the right hand side so it doesn't really matter where we put the parenthesis we put the parenthesis here or we put the parenthesis here so in the future the parenthesis will be omitted instead of writing with the parenthesis we will simply write a b v without any parentheses matrix product as you have probably already learned is different from scalar product in many ways first of all suppose we have a matrix product it's equal to the zero matrix does it imply a is a zero matrix or b is the zero matrix we know this is true in the scalar case right if we have two scalar a b the product is equal to zero then we can include immediately conclude that either a is zero or b is zero is it the same for matrix product what's your answer pause and come back what do you think about this it's not always true isn't it for example we can give a counter example to show that this is not true suppose a is this matrix zero one and b is this matrix one zero no oh, this is a special case b is just simply a column vector and b is a row vector and the product a b becomes a scalar it's the zero scalar but neither a nor b is the zero matrix so this is in general not true and what we have done here is proof by counterexample proof by counterexample proof by counterexample 
And this is a very popular or very useful way of proving things. Another question. Suppose we have A, that's an M by P matrix, and B is an M by Q matrix. One is M by P, the other one is M by Q. Is the product defined? It's not defined, isn't it? This number here has to be the same as this number here for the product to be defined. So in this case, AB is not defined. Okay, let's look at an example of matrix products. Suppose A is the is an M by P matrix, and we would like to compute the matrix product I M A, the identity matrix and A. By definition, the first column of the product matrix will be I M A one and the second column I M A two continue to the last column is I M A P. And we know the matrix vector product, right? We have talked about matrix product of the identity matrix and uh, a vector. For example, this one is precisely A1. And the second one is A2. And the last one is AP. So this is, is A again. So whenever we take the matrix product of an identity matrix and an arbitrary A matrix, we get the same matrix back. Another example, let's consider matrix product A and an identity matrix. Here, this is identity matrix is at the front. Here, the identity matrix is at the back. By definition, again, we get the first column is AE1, the second column AE2, all the way to AEP. And we know when we have the matrix vector product AE1, it has the effect of extracting the first column vector of A. And AE2 will extract the second column of A. So... In the end, we get A1 as the first column, A2 as the second column, and AP as the last column. So again, we get A back. So it doesn't matter where identity matrix is at the front or at the back. The products always give us the A matrix. You probably have learned the matrix product before. A form that you might have known is the row column rule. The i ith entry of the AB matrix of the product is the ith entry of ABJ because the i ith entry, right? So it's the ith row and the jth column. And the jth column of this vector the abj and because we are talking about ij so it's the ith entry of abj and by definition this matrix vector product the i entry will be simply aik and then b k j sum over k from 1 to p an example of a rotation matrix and um, this is discussed in page 98 of the textbook you may find there in your reading assignment that a beta and a alpha is equal to in another rotation matrix with angle equal to alpha plus beta. This is a reading assignment for you. Theorem 2.1 gives a summary of properties for matrix product. Suppose a b matrix are matrix of size k by m, c is of size m by p, and p q are of size m by P. For example, let's take a look at um, this one here. The matrix product, here we have a matrix product AC, and then we do the scalar multiplication. Then uh, this is the same as first we do the sc scalar multiplication SA, and then this matrix, and then we take the product of the matrix SA and the C, this is the same, okay? And this is also the same as first we form the scalar multiplication as C and then we multiply with A. So all these are the same. One, two, three are the same. This is true for all scalar S. The second property says, suppose we have three matrices ACP. If we first form the matrix product CP and then the matrix product A and the matrix CP. This is the same as first we do the matrix product AC and then we multiply it with P. This is called 
associative law. And then suppose we have the sum a plus b, and then we form the matrix product. This is the same as we first perform matrix product of AB and BC and then sum them up. This is called right distributive law. Similarly, we have a left distributive law. And uh, E is a property we have already seen. Whether or we multiply an identity matrix at the front or an identity matrix at the back, it's the same a matrix. Um, the product of A matrix and, and the zero matrix is still the zero matrix. And this is true for all A matrix. And the transpose of the matrix product AC is the matrix product of C transpose and A transpose. We will leave the proof as an exercise. Some notation. Suppose we have the matrix product A and A, then we'll simply write A to the second power. And similarly, if we have 3a, a and a and a, then we will simply write it as a to the power of 3. And by convention, a to the power of 0 is the identity matrix. And sometimes we have augmented matrix. Suppose we have a matrix a that has a size n by n and another matrix B size n by P. If we put them together and form an augmented matrix, then we have n column plus P column. So together this would be a m times n plus P matrix. This would be a matrix of size n by n plus P. For example, A is the identity matrix, and B is the matrix 1, 1, 1, 1. We form the augmented matrix, and it will be a matrix of size 2 by 4, 1, 0, 0, 1, and the 1, 1, 1, 1. Now let's talk about two special matrices. First one, suppose A is a square matrix, n by n, and we say it's a diagonal matrix. Diagonal matrix, if all the off-diagonal term Aij for i not equal to j, all the entries not on the diagonal are equal to zero. For example, we have a diagonal matrix here. On the diagonal, it could be non-zero. But for the off-diagonal, not on the diagonal, off-diagonal terms, they are all zero in a question. Suppose both A and B matrix are n by n, and they both of them are diagonal matrix. Does that mean the product, the matrix product, is also diagonal matrix? Think about this. We will leave this as an exercise. Another special matrix. We say a square matrix is symmetric. Symmetric if A transpose A is the same as A. Well, a simple example, um, Suppose on the diagonal A is equal to 1, 2, and 3. And uh, let's say the off-diagonal term, it's 1 here. And we know A transpose is equal to A, right? So that means that this must be a 1 as well. And suppose this is a 0, then it means this one must be 0. And suppose this one is minus 1, then this one must be minus 1 as well. A would be a symmetric matrix. A question. Suppose A is a diagonal matrix. And uh, does that make A transpose also diagonal matrix? For example, with this A here, this is a diagonal matrix. If we take the transpose, then it's still the same matrix, right? So it's not a factor by transpose. So indeed, this is true. If this is a diagonal matrix, then A transpose is also diagonal.